this is the Hollywood Hopper. This is a pattern that I've been playing around with for a few years now, and uh, it's new to you guys, but uh, it's been in my box for a while now. Um, and I've been fishing it uh, opposite of the Hopper Wand. Um, specifically, when I'm using it, I'm fishing it just as a single hopper, and it's done well over the last couple of years. And Montana Fly Company picked it up this last year. Um, this one is a golden color, and I'll, I'm going to show you how I uh, how I tie that one. Um, I start with two pieces of foam, super or uh, super 77 them together, let them dry, let them set, and then I come back and spray the top of it again, fold it over, so I can make this sandwich type, uh, um, kind of a bullet head type thing. So it has eight mil worth of foam on it. So uh, everything's kind of glued and sandwiched together so what I'm looking at is I want to cut this piece about an inch and a quarter in length so I'm gonna go inch and a quarter I'm gonna cut that what I'm gonna do is just use a, a single razor blade I'm gonna get my length so all I do is just cut that and that gives me a little bit of length on the back end what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna taper it by doing so, what that does is it gets a little bit of that tan color in there. Okay, so what I want to do with this piece of foam here is place it, make sure my thread is in the correct location, place it right up on top. I'm going to have a little shooting out the back end, and I'm going to tie this kind of like a club sandwich. So I'm going to use 6 hot thread. I'm going to bind it down there pretty tight, okay? And then I'm going to tie this with thread wraps, lashing it down. I'm going to make a, make sure on the back side, because I can't see it, make sure those wraps are fairly straight. Otherwise, I end up with uh, weird-looking body segments, okay? So I adjusted that one couple wraps there come over the top I can roll this foam because it's not secured down I can wait and secure that later but I can roll it to me to see what I'm doing so I'm going up over on top placing those thread wraps and then making sure each thread wrap lands in the same spot as where my previous segments or uh, thread wraps were so I'm going to work that back, continuing to come back um, to the hook bend. And some days, you know, all my segments come out the same spacing. Other days, they don't. So I'm just coming up over the top. I'm going to have one last segment here before I have to jump behind the hook. Okay, so I'm at that point where I have to jump behind the the hook there. The bend of that hook. So now I'm coming, rolling this, placing the thread coming underneath. And this is kind of the hard part. After a few tries you get an idea for what you're doing. Tightening those up. And that reason I cut that taper in, as you'll see right now, is that it it's not as bulky as it would be if I didn't put the taper in there. Plus it shows a little bit of that tan, which um, I kind of like. So I'm going to place this one right there. Hopefully that lands in the same segment right there. So that's where the taper now starts kind of peeling upwards. And then I'm going to put one last segment here. Once I make that last segment, I'm going to start going forward towards the front of the uh, hook now. So I'm just coming over the top, kind of crisscrossing, trying to make sure that one missed, fell off. So I'm going to do it again. Come up and continue to move forward. Now I hop right there in front of the hook again. 
go in each body segment up to where I started, okay? So that's still rotating on me, that's fine. I'm going to come back and secure it a little bit later. So once I'm up here, I jump to the uh, front. I'm going to make one segment behind the hook eye there. Kind of make my head on this hopper. See how I did that? I'm going to try to make sure everything's in the same spot. Secure it a few times. Hop back. So I have a kind of a big thorax there. Okay. Now, when I get to this point, I'm going to go ahead and use these. Um, these are Montana Fly Company. The uh, Hop Eyes is what they call them. These ones are brown. And uh, these are the large size because I'm tying a size 8 hopper. So I just peel those off with a um, with a needle and then I place them on both sides. Do you need these? No, but uh, if you have them, if, um, kind of what I did was I had them, um, might as well use them. So they kind of give this hopper a really good look. And I don't think I wouldn't tie it without them. Um, so it's pretty easy. Just stick on. Gives it kind of a different look to it. Okay. At this point now, we want to tie on some legs. And what I'm going to do is use some tan barred legs. I'm just going to place them right here. They're going to have um, a set on both sides. And uh, what I want to do is I'm going to come in here and clip off the uh, front portion of these legs. So I'm going to tie them in like I normally would X style. A few wraps and trim this, of course. Try to match them up in length. I'm going to come back here, cut these back legs off. So now I just kind of have like a single set. Now I grab these legs, these are Montana Fly Company um, AK hopper legs. They come like this. I'm going to clip this off. I'm going to cut it right in the middle. And what that allows me to do is to come on each side and place these in at whatever angle I want. And they tie in really nice and neat. Come to the opposite side, match what you're doing on the uh, on your opposite side. Tie them in. They flare just a little bit, not too much. And you can adjust them as needed, angle-wise, up to have them sitting up a little bit more. Once I have them placed, tie it down. Come in, cut those little nubs out. Now, before I go too far, I'm just going to put a couple marks on those legs just to give it a little bit of character. So I'm going to come in here with a Sharpie and do a few dots. Of course, you don't have to do that. I uh, like to spruce this up just a little bit. So I just put a few dots on there with the Sharpie. All right, now I need to throw in the, uh, what I like to do is put in kind of an, a wing on there, an overwing. Place that right up on top. It's two mil foam stamped out with a uh, Stonefly wing cutter. So I just tied that right up on top. I'm going to secure it to the body with foam, with uh, glue here in a second. Tie that right up on top. And for the top kind of indicator piece, I stamped this out with a um, Chernobyl cutter. Using those cutters makes everything uniform and clean. And so you don't have a bunch of different pieces looking looking different from each other. So now I'm going to hop up to the front, to the first segment. I'm going to get my legs, leg material, I'm going to put a couple legs up front. So I get my barred rubber legs, tie both sets in, a couple wraps just to secure them up on there, and slide them out to the side. And it looks like I captured one right here. I need to pull that guy out. Got legs everywhere. So now I just place those where I need them to be. Pull this down, this indicator piece. Secure it. Try not to trap any more legs. Once I do that, 
come in here closely with my blade and cut close. Get kind of a clean look there. Okay. Now I'm just going to measure my legs, trim them as needed, make sure they're not too long. Cut them down just a little bit. Don't need them too big. Now, what I'm going to do to finish this fly is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to coat my thread with super glue. And then I'm going to wrap over. Okay. Now, while that's kind of drawn, I'm going to come in here and hit the back of my uh, body, top of my body up here, with that same super glue. And I'm going to bind down that wing. Because I want that wing, and I can just pull it out and kind of take a look, make sure it's centered. I want that wing secured down to that body. Do it again because it came undone. Alright, once I have that secured on there, my indicator's up. Basically, I'm done because I did put that glue and it acts as a whip finish, so I don't have to actually whip finish it. But this is, uh, this is the completed hopper. A little more realistic than my uh, hopper wand. The only thing I need to do is uh, to go ahead and hit that with glue. Uh, once I pull that out of the vise, I can do that. But this is uh, designed and it's fished for more of a realistic pattern. It's, uh, it's fished differently than my hopper wand. It's not quite as visible. I don't fish it with a dropper usually. I fish it by itself. Um, I tie it in, you know, you can tie it in sixes, eights, tens. Twelves gets kind of small, but you can make those adjustments. You can use some, uh, thinner foam, maybe a 1.5 mil foam. But um, great little pattern to have. You know, it just uh, looks a little bit uh, more realistic, and, and it works great. Change of colors on the bottom. You can do pink, peach, purple, any other colors. Here's a purple hopper I did earlier. Red legs, red eyes. Got a different look to it. Kind of the original tan and olive color. Mix up a few things. Got that color here tan olive um, or olive tan and uh, you know you can mi mix and match just, just different colors so uh, that's it that's the uh, Hollywood Hopper and um, it's been a great little pattern it's fairly easy to tie once you figure out what what you're doing um, can substitute materials you don't have to have the AK legs on there you don't have to have the eyes you can hit them with a the marker um, but it's not a bad uh, looking pattern once you put all those on there. So that's it. That's the Hollywood Hopper.